the Department of Justice, I believe, teased a major cryptocurrency enforcement announcement that spooked the markets. Bitcoin was selling off. They announced it at noon Eastern. It's a bit of a nothing burger. I think there was a lot of speculation that bigger parties would be involved. But the news is is that Bit lot, Bits Lotto, which I had never heard of before, a Russian crypto exchange, <laughs> the founder of that exchange, was arrested. We're going to hear a clip from a press conference that is happening now. Let's go. Today's law enforcement actions put all of those who seek to exploit the cryptocurrency ecosystem on notice that the Department of Justice will use every tool working along with our partners, every tool that we have to attack the criminal use of the dark net and cryptocurrency. And we are taking steps to address the crisis of confidence in the cryptocurrency markets, where criminals and fraudsters seek to operate beyond the reach of law enforcement. You're seeing a live feed of the Department of Justice press conference now. I'm tossing it to David for initial thoughts. What's this all about? Yeah, I, I want to say two things. Um, first, I think um, we kind of got fudded by the DOJ here, uh, the, the major announcement that uh, stopped what was a, uh, a a building rally for for Bitcoin and similar assets. Um, certainly not uh, the worst thing in the world. I think we could use a little cool down maybe, but uh, it is interesting that they hyped this up and, and it's a rather obscure, but it seems significant um, exchange that was basically operating without KYC, uh, working closely with something called Hydra Market uh, to uh, essentially launder criminal proceeds. Um, so, so you know, it's it's significant, um, but uh, but it's not the quite as major as they were hyping it up to be. Um, I want to say two other things. One is that every time there's there's a tension in all of these enforcement actions, right? Because uh, regulators and legislators in the United States are constantly agitating for new crypto regulations, tighter rules. We need to like change the way this all works. But every time a law enforcement agency successfully busts one of these big criminal operations under current law, it undermines the argument that we need different, stricter laws for crypto. Um, so I want to highlight that. Final point in what we just heard, some interesting phrasing. They're going up against people who exploit the crypto ecosystem, and they're framing their actions as restoring faith in crypto, was something to the effect of what I heard, which is a very interesting and I think somewhat novel formulation from DOJ compared to saying the cryptocurrency ecosystem enables inherently criminal activity. Um, so I, I think that that's a quite interesting um, framing coming from them that I just want to highlight. Danny, you want to take a shot? For sure, yeah. And I, I agree with you, and I appreciate you bringing up that point. The, the wording here is everything. DOJ really pours over how it presents information like this to the world. And for them to say, we're doing this to make sure that people aren't misusing crypto. It's not They're not like defending the industry, but they are certainly policing it and almost giving it like an olive branch and saying, you have... I guess a right to exist, and but of course we have a right to prosecute uh, those who break our laws. So this will uh, be an un unfortunate development for users of this exchange. But at least in terms of for the the way the DOJ is thinking about it, they're doing what's right by the crypto space. Mm -hmm. Wendy, I gotta chime in. Okay, couple things. Um, we're literally talking about a country that's been pretty much sanctioned by the entire world. So I don't understand how the DOJ can come in and charge this person anyways, because if it is a Russian exchange and this person is in Russia, like they can charge them, but can they really go in and get them? Because we've, we've heard a lot of different news about, hold on, Zach, hold on, Zach, hold on, Zach. And also too, one of the things that I always think about, and again, we got to put on the tinfoil tiara here, is that when they announce news like this, especially a big nothing burger news, what are they announcing to the world to hide? Because there's always other things happening behind the scenes that doesn't get pushed out to mainstream media because of all this insanity that they're talking about to me, which is really a big nothing burger. Go ahead, Zach. This just in. No, he was a Russian national uh, arrested in Miami. So he was residing or at least present in the oh. U.S. when this enforcement was enforcement okay. action was taken. Um, so that's uh, that's certainly worth noting in terms of where this arrest occurred and how. So, uh, yeah, they're uh, asserting sort of um, 
jurisdictional uh, ability to take this action. And I'm sure um, according to the law, that's something that's, that is legit. And that's what happened here. That was the, that was the, uh, the news event. But I think the announcements of the announcement, people were certainly expecting something maybe a bit more substantive. He just and send us. Are they just and send us? They did. J- D- DOJ mm-hmm. just and send us by doing the announcement of the announcement. David, any last, last thoughts on this one before we wrap? Um, I just wanted, I had one clarifying comment, which is another part of the DOJ statement, was that despite claiming they weren't serving U.S. customers, this exchange was serving U.S. customers, which is pretty much always the case, and, and that's basis for actions like this.